Hello, today is Friday, April 12th, and welcome to episode 322 of Fault Lines, the National Security Institute's podcast that gets you quickly up to speed three times a week on the foreign policy and national security debates shaking up America. I'm NSI's founder and executive director, Jamil Jaffer. I'm joined in studio uh, by Morgan Vina, NSI senior fellow. Uh, Les Munson, another NSI senior fellow, is on the line as well. And so is Jessica Jones from our home studio, our NSI's deputy executive director. So today we are talking once again about the train wreck that is the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, just this past week, uh, the U.S. House of Representatives sought to take action uh, on legislation to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. If you have heard about this before, it's because we've been talking about it a lot because this thing actually was about to expire back in December. Congress extended it to April, but now we're back again. No shock, Congress hasn't taken action yet. As of next week, this authority, which by the way, permits the U.S. government to conduct surveillance not on Americans anywhere in the world, but actually allows them to conduct surveillance on foreigners located overseas, but do it here in the United States. Um, that law is set to expire in one week. If it expires, literally half of the intelligence going into the president's daily brief, that's the most important intelligence product the president gets every morning, will be gone. We will essentially be deaf at that point. That's a huge problem for the U.S. government, um, and it's why Congress is scrambling to get something done. So earlier this week, the speaker put on the on the floor or sought to put on the floor a bill uh, to reauthorize this law for five years. It has a bunch of reforms in it uh, to address some concerns with the law, about 50 plus reforms. Uh, but as as luck would have it, President Trump, the morning of the vote on the rule. Now, by the way, the way that the way the House works is that you have to pass a rule before you can pass a bill. It's, it sets the ground rules for debate in the House and the number of amendments that are allowed. So they were voting on the rule. And that morning, as this podcast was playing, and I think you guys were actually mocking uh, the situation in the House on other issues, on Ukraine aid, um, the, um, the president put out a, a message on Truth Social saying we should kill FISA, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. It was used, he claimed it was used to surveil him and his campaign. He's presumably referring to the Carter Page surveillance, which did take place under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, just not under the law that we're talking about renewing now, under traditional FISA, which isn't on the table today. And in fact, this new bill would actually re conduct re engage in reforms traditional advice that would actually help with the Tower Page problem. But never let the details bother Donald Trump. He tweeted this out. That caused 19 House Republicans to join with 209 Democrats who were voting against the rule for a variety of other reasons, like some mean stuff about Joe Biden and immigration, and caused the, the rule to go down, meaning the bill couldn't be considered by the House, meaning the, the law hasn't been reauthorized. And here we are a week out before the U.S. is about to go deaf when it comes to signals intelligence. That's a disaster. So less you are a long-term former House staffer. You're in the Senate as well when both Morgan and I work for you. But let's talk about your House experience. I mean, this is, this is a disaster. The Speaker is on the line when it comes to Ukraine. He's on the line now on surveillance. They're voting today, by the way. The Speaker's putting it back on the floor, this time with a two-year extension instead of a five-year, hoping to get it done. He is going to give folks, as he was earlier this week, going to give folks a clean vote on a warrant requirement, which is something that some people are concerned about. We can talk a little bit more about that. But like, let's talk about just the politics of this, Les. What the heck is going on in the House of Representatives. You're muted, buddy. You're muted. I love that even on a I podcast, was indeed even muted. on a podcast, we got to talk about people being muted. Because my, my stupid computer keeps beeping randomly. Um, <clears throat> so, Jamil, what a great question. I think if I were a political consultant for a candidate challenging a member of the Freedom Caucus in a primary, I would talk about the number of times that member voted with Democrats on key national security <laughs> issues, because that is what is happening here. It's crazy. Uh, a good chunk of the Freedom Caucus is voting with Democrats to thwart Republican initiatives. So crazy. who's the rhino, my friends? Who is the rhino? Well, but uh, hold on, can, is... I, can, I ask, can I ask you a question, Les? So didn't the didn't the Freedom Caucus or whatever you want to call them, the MAGA Republicans, didn't they actually take out Speaker McCarthy for working with Democrats on, on, on doing the budget? And now they're working with Democrats to take down surveillance. What the hell is going on with these people? Yeah. So it's like they're uh, it's like they're a plant inside the Republican Party to from the Democrats to undermine any kind of successful operation. Having said that, uh, we should we should be a little bit more realistic here. There's there's a lot of dissent inside the Republican Party. It is a feature, not a bug of the operation mm. these days. Part of part of the charm of the Republican Party is that is that you see all of the disagreements. I think I think that, well, to the extent there is any charm, that is what it is. Uh, 
with respect to President Trump uh, talking about killing FISA, even though it wasn't the specific program that spied on Carter Page, uh, that's not the point. The point is he wants to show everyone that he controls what happens in the House of Representatives. This was a demonstration project for him to show that he's still got the throw weight to get things done and people better pay attention to him. And, and that Freedom Caucus is happy to go along with that. So well, that's what's going on here. Mike Johnson, the speaker, is in Mar-a-Lago today to go down there to um, try to try. Some people say kiss the ring. I say heal the breach. Uh, and I think it's I think it's actually in the grand scheme of Let's things. Pray for his job. If we want to if we want to get to a place where the House of Representatives can get some smart things done, like FISA, like aid to Ukraine. And by the way, like PEPFAR, which we should do a whole nother podcast on, which is oh a similar God. catastrophe. Uh, this this has to happen. There needs the the Republican Party needs to take tough steps to unify and have a, a presentation in public that is more sensible. Less there's no unification of the Republican Party when the leader of the Republican Party isn't actually even a Republican. The man was a Democrat the entire time uh, before he decided to run for office. I mean, come on, like there's a unification of a Republican Party that is run by a, by somebody who doesn't literally doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, come, this is insane. For you, friend, you served the Trump. My friend, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, hold this on. is where we are, though. This is the reality we have to deal with. We can't we can't project, a, you know, an idealized scenario onto something that doesn't exist. We have I, to deal with what we have. I got to tell you, Les, I think I'm done with this Republican Party. I'm getting right there. This is ridiculous. Like, we are we are a joke of a party at this point. It is embarrassing. Well, it doesn't matter. We're, Morgan, you served the Trump. Fire. Fire you right served there. the Trump administration. Like you've seen this train wreck up front and up close and personal, <laughs> serving with Nikki Haley um, at USUN. Like like what like what. What are we? What are we doing here? Like, how do, how does this? Like, I think this is right. This is a demonstration project to demonstrate that Donald Trump controls the House. So now what? Reels on a roll this morning. Like, I am not going to pretend to know what is in Donald Trump's head. That is a dark, dark place. <laughs> I'm just not going to go there. Well, let's wants to heal the breach. That's yeah, good. Okay. Well, look. All I can say though is that I think it's it's the Republicans right now in the House are an embarrassment of, of, of riches when it comes to their, their their failures this year, right before a November election. Um, this is the seventh rules vote. Actually, yes, excuse me, yesterday was the seventh rules vote um, that, that has failed since they have been in the majority. Um, these are procedural votes. These are not hard. Um, and yet the Republican Party has, has demonstrated that um, this failure to unify um, has, you know, has, has really broken, broken the party and it has national security impacts for the country. I would note too, though, that, um, I like the Dems, there's so many Democrats that actually support FISA renewal and yet they voted against, it's they crazy. said no. Yeah. Um, Tim Himes, the, the ranking member of the, so, of the House of Committee, this is his bill. Yes. So like, so bottom line here, like, yes, it's easy. It is so easy to, to, to blame Republicans here because they are in the majority. They are supposed to be leading and they seem to be really shooting themselves in the foot at every opportunity right before you know, a major election. At the same time, though, um, I mean, you want to talk playing politics here and putting politics above national security. I mean, that is exactly what Democrats are doing here. You have so many Dems that are, are, are tr they, they understand the importance of FISA, and yet they are kowtowing to leadership and voting no. Yeah, I do think it's outrageous that Hakeem Jeffries announced yesterday that, that, that House Democrats will not help Republicans get a critical national security po policy priority done. By the way, the White House backs this thing. It's so crazy to me. Jess, what, what are we doing here? I mean, I mean, you're, our, you're sort of our, our resident Democrat on the podcast, even though I don't know where you are. I mean, you didn't used to be, but whatever. Like, very talk scary fact if I'm the resident Democrat on this podcast. But, but, but you're sort of the, 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 the young person, younger than us at least. I mean, give us get, help us out here, Jess. What? I mean, okay, I mean maybe not. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, what, where, what are we yourself, doing here? Jones, Jones, label yourself. Don't right. let him do that. How do you identify, you, you Jess? Pick your uh, own yeah. adjectives. Give us your pronouns. Well, identification. Talk to us. No, I mean, I agree with Les. It's obviously, you know, you've got Trump is making, is calling shots on ukraine the border and now you've got fisa um you've got like he mentioned johnson going down to mar-a-lago today i i, I don't Jesus. think it's to, to heal the breach i think it's to keep his job you've got yes. reports indicating that house leadership went gop leadership went to trump to make the argument for fisa and he's basically like signed off on a two-year deal because then he will be in office and he can have more of a negotiating hand the next time it comes up for reauthorization right so it, it's 
I mean, as much as we, I love that we joked about Faisal on Wednesday so much and still Jamil got this episode in, it's, it's crazy. Like the house continued it's two episodes in a row on house GOP and we've shifted to, again, Ukraine, which was hope going to be the priority after the vote on FISA still isn't and we're still backtracking and and trying to push forward somehow it does look like by the way in ukraine that they're trying to get the administration is now going back to the original plan which actually is the right thing which is use these seize russian assets to fund the ukraine war not a crazy idea actually may in this case the donald trump intervention may actually have, have had some salutary effects in, 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 i know it's shocking what? i don't even want to say what, that but what, like what 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 here what do we should we go back and erase that before we publish this what did you just say Jamil? I, I said it i said it i said it because you know actually this is not the this is, this is not a bad idea right we should use the seize russian assets to pay for ukraine aid I don't mind this idea. I also don't mind years, the It's going to take years to get access to those assets. It's a fine idea in the long term, but it's going to take yeah. years to get a hold of them. They're all work. in okay. Europe. Practically, Europe. Work. say that again. I just, I just said practically, it doesn't work. Yeah, like yes, it's great in theory, yeah. but like when you actually execute it, it's just not. It's not going to make a difference. Totally agree. All right. Well, there you go. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thanks so much to Devlin Bernie, Claude Jennings, the NSI staff for their help in producing today's episode. Join us again on Monday, April 15th, tax day, people, tax day, and also the day that I'm going to try and relocate my Ram season tickets for another episode of Fall Lines, the National Security News podcast that gets you smart fast on the National Security Foreign Policy Debates Shaking Up America. Fall Lines now on YouTube. So check out our channel for a video of today's episode. If you like what you heard or saw, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Have a great weekend.